All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Algebra 1, Chapter 10, 6, Distance and Midpoint. These formulas, I know, look ridiculously crazy, so I'm going to break them down for you to try to make this a little more easy and understandable. So, if you have two points like this on a graph, okay, you can figure out the distance between these two points by making this a triangle. So, I can go from here down to here, from there to here, and from here back up there. All right, so there we have a triangle. Let's get rid of this little piece. Nope, yep. All right, now that triangle is a right triangle. Okay, so here I can count. I have one, two, three units, so this is three. One, two, three, four. So now to figure out this side here, I can do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. That's 25. 9 plus 16 is 25 equals c squared. So this distance here, c equals 5. Now, if I don't have a graph in front of me, and I'm just told this is at 1 and 4, and this point here is at 5 and 1. So now I have a point at 1 and 4, and the second point is at 5 and f 5 and 1. To figure out what this distance is that I'm traveling down here, okay, this distance right here is how far I'm going from 4 to 1 on the y-axis. So I take this value, 4 and 1. I can do 4 minus 1. Those are the y values. That's y1 minus y2. And that gives me 3. So I know that this length is 3. If I want to know the horizontal change from 1 to 5, I do 5 minus 1, or 1 minus 5, 5 minus 1. I want to know the absolute value of these. 5 minus 1, and that's a distance of 5 minus 1, is a distance of 4. Now notice here I did 4 minus 1 here at 5 minus 1. It's always going to be the positive answer, so it's going to be the absolute value. So I could have done 1 minus 5 here and still gotten 4 because I'm doing the absolute value of these because it's the distance we're talking about. Okay, so that's the difference of the y values and the difference of the x values. So that's what the distance formula is. Okay, the distance between two points. It looks crazy like this, but it is really just the Pythagorean theorem. There's a squared, b squared, and this is c squared. In order to find c, I have to take the square root so the distance formula is d is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So that's just the, diff the horizontal distance and the vertical distance. So this is just like the Pythagorean theorem solved for c, where c is the distance between the two points. Okay, so if I have an example here, the distance here, this is just similar to what I had earlier. This is the absolute value of y2 minus y1, or y1 minus y2. doesn't really matter which way around we go. And then this is the absolute value of x2 minus x1. Okay, so I want to find the distance between these two points. I have 5, 3, and 1, and negative 2. So I'll name this my first point, 5 and 3, and 1 and negative 2, my second point. Again, doesn't matter. I can flip those around, too. Okay, so x2 is going to be uh, 1, and then I'm subtracting 5. And then y2 is negative 2 minus 3. Okay, first do what's in parentheses, and then we're going to square it. Now, notice we got negative values here. Distance is always positive. I don't have to do absolute value here because I'm going to square it anyways. Once I square it, it's always going to be positive. Okay, so I get 16 plus 25. Square root of that 
we have the square root of 41. So the distance is approximately 6.4 units. These two points are approximately 6.4 units apart. All right, here's another example. This time, I want to know where could these points be in order to be 5 units apart. So I have a point 47 and another point A and 3. They're 5 units apart. So I plug in my distance formula. Now I know that the distance is 5. So I'm going to put that in there for D. Okay, and then plug in the rest of this. We have A minus 4, A minus 4, and then 3 minus 7. Now A minus 4 squared we're going to leave that for now. 3 minus 7, we can subtract a minus 4 squared. You do the box method or the FOIL method, however you need to do it, but it's not a squared minus 4 squared. Be careful of that. Okay, it's a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So a squared minus, four, minus 8a plus 16. And then negative 4 squared is 16. Simplify this. And here... In order to get rid of the radical, I'm going to square both sides. I get 25 equals a squared minus 8a plus 32. And then we're going to solve this like a quadratic. We're going to bring the 25 over, make this equal 0. And then you can put it in the quadratic formula. Or however you want to factor it out, you can use the box method. You get a minus 7 times a minus 1. And then I get two solutions in this case. That means there are two points that I could plug in here that would make these five units apart. Okay, so four and seven is here. So one point that is five apart is at seven and three. That's this seven. The other one is at one and three. That one's also five units apart. So there can be two solutions, two different points that are five units apart. All right, here we go. Midpoint formula. The midpoint is basically the, the middle between two points, which is the average of those two points. Okay, so this is the crazy midpoint formula right here. x1 plus x2 divided by 2. That's just the average of these two x values. And so if x is at 6 and the other one's at 2, then halfway in between would be 4. Right? So we just add them together, divide by 2. So here, for example, we have the x values right there and right here. If I want to find halfway in between, I have to add those together and divide by 2. Then I come up with this point. Same thing with the y values. I have this value and this value. If I want to find the midpoint between them, I add these two together and divide by 2. That gives me the average of the two. Okay, so finding the coordinates between these two points. We have x1 plus x2 divided by 2, and y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Plug in what we, what we know for this. So we have negative 1 plus 3 divided by 2. And then for the y values, we have negative 4 plus a negative. Now, I'm writing this plus a negative so you can see what's happening here, but remember that's just minus 4 divided by 2. Okay, so we're going to have 2 over 2, which can simplify down to 1, and then negative 6 over 2. Okay, so our midpoint between the two is 1 and negative 3. And that's all the fun we're going to have today. See you in the next show.